Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lecture series for Math 085. This is section 2.5, part 1. We're going to introduce fractions. Now, we should be somewhat familiar with fractions. We do encounter them on a daily basis. Uh, let's just define what the parts of a fraction are. If you recall, this bar here indicates division. This just says 1 divided by 4. And we know that 4 does not evenly go into 1. So let's define it a little further. What, what do we call the top of a fraction or this uncompleted division? We call it the numerator. And what do we call the bottom? Well, <clears throat> when we defined uh, division, we called this the divisor. Well, when it's in fraction form, it's known as the denominator. So we have a numerator over a denominator. It's 1 divided by 4 in this example. So where do we experience fractions in the real world? Well, one example would be a football game. If uh, we go to a football game, we know that a football game is divided into quarters. You have the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. Uh, and somewhere right in the middle, you have halftime. Makes sense, right? Right in the middle is half. And that, too, is a fraction. So we do encounter these very frequently. So how do we work with fractions? And what are they more in-depthly? Well, let's look at this example. If I have, let's say, a pie, and I want to divide it into six pieces, and I'm going to eat two of them because I like pie, right? So <clears throat> if we have this, essentially what we're doing is we have one whole pie. And I've divided this pie into six sections, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I eat. Two pieces of this pie, this is gone now. We can say that I ate 2 sixths of this pie, 2 sixths. This is the portion that I would have consumed. Well, what portion would be left? Well, I can say 1, 2, 3, 4 out of the 6 pieces is left. So I could say 4 out of 6. Now, these two particular fractions aren't in simplest form, but we'll get to that later in this video. So <clears throat> that's how we picture fractions, and these are the purpose that they serve. Let's go over here for a moment and say, let's, let's have this rectangle divided into five parts. So I'm going to divide it into five parts. One, two, three, four, and five. Just imagine that those were five equal parts. If I do something with three of these five parts, I will have three-fifths of this rectangle. Well, let's go ahead and just shade in three parts of the five. If we look at this rectangle, we have three-fifths of this pie that are, or of this rectangle that are shaded in. We have one two-fifths that are not. So we've divided it by 5. And then we say, well, how many of that 5? 3 per 5, or in this case, 2 per 5, if we look at the unshaded region. What if we have something else? Let, let's take a look at this triangle here, 2 thirds. That means I would have to divide by 3. So let's divide this by 3. And let's assume those are 3 equal pieces all the way around of this triangle. If I want two out of these three, I could shade in two of them. And 2 thirds of this triangle are shaded. 2 thirds of this triangle are shaded. So it's two parts out of the whole of three. And what we've seen so far, these have all been proper fractions. They may not have been simplified like the last example, but they are proper fractions. What makes a fraction proper? Well, a fraction is just a rational number. And a rational number means we could put it on a number line. It is a number, a whole number, divided by another whole number, or an integer divided by an integer. So if we have two integers being divided, if the top integer is less than the bottom, if the numerator is smaller than the bottom, we have a proper fraction. If we look at this, 2 is smaller than 3. The numerator is smaller than the denominator. It is a proper fraction. 3 divided by 5. 3 is less than 5. 
this is a proper fraction. So let's look at improper fractions. Well, what makes a fraction improper? Well, that's where the numerator is greater than the denominator. So we can still use fractions to represent this. This just means that I have more than 1, 4 out of 3, an improper fraction. So what am I going to do if I'm going to shade in these pies? Well, first of all, each pi is divided by 3. 1, 2, 3, divided by 3. That's what my fraction tells me. So each one of these is divided by 3. And I'm going to take four parts of these three pieces. So I can consume this and this and this. Well, that's 3. And 3 out of 3, let's just kind of think about that for a moment, is one whole piece. 3 divided by 3 is 1. That makes sense. But I have 4 thirds, which means I need a fourth piece shaded in. Of these thirds, I have four of them, four thirds. And we may encounter this. Let's say we go to a pizza place and we're with some friends. And one pizza isn't going to be enough. And two might be too many. But we order two anyways, because we don't want anyone to go away hungry. And we find out, OK, well, of, of my friends, I ate one third, and someone else ate a third, and someone else ate a third, and someone else ate a third. Well, we still have a remainder of pizza. Well, great, we get to take some home in a little box and have cold pizza in the morning. Who knows? But <clears throat> we represent how much pizza we consume by saying 4 thirds of my pizzas are gone. All right, let's explore this a little bit more, 3 thirds. Here I have a rectangle, and I divide the rectangle into three equal parts, because it says 3 thirds. If I were to shade this in, I'm shading in 1, 2, 3 parts. That is the whole rectangle. That's why 3 thirds equals 1. Well, this is an interesting way to write 1. I could write 6 sixths. That's equal to 1. Or I could have 10 tenths. That's equal to 1. It just means I have the whole which is divided by 3 in this case. So what does that mean? Well, one thing that we've encountered before is any number divided by itself is 1. So it doesn't matter what this is as long as it's the numerator and the denominator. We talked about proper fractions being the numerator less than the denominator, improper fractions. The numerator is greater than the denominator. But what happens when they're the same? This is where it equals 1. It is not a fraction. We can actually do that division to get a whole number. What about a number divided by 1? We've explored this in previous videos. Any number divided by 1 is that number. We can divide any number by 1 without changing it. Same thing as multiplying a number by 1. We don't change it. Here we have 0 divided by n. Well, 0 divided by any number is always going to be 0. That's one of our properties of 0 we have discussed. But what about n divided by 0? If I have a number of items, I can't divide it so that there are no more items. I can't divide this rectangle so that the rectangle does not exist. So that's why we look at this and say, hey, this is undefined. I can't make something not exist if I have it. All right. Sometimes when we're dealing with rational numbers, fractions, we need to find out where they lie on a number line. And we can do that relatively simple if we graph a number line. And we want to put a value on it such as 2 thirds. If I want to see where 2 thirds is on here, well, I know 3 thirds is 1. I want 2 thirds. So if I want 2 thirds, I have to divide this section, just like we divided those images, into three sections. So I'm going to divide it here and here so that I have three equal spaces, 1, 2, 3. So three parts to my 1. So each one of these is 1 third. Since this is 2 thirds, this would be 1 third. This would be two of those thirds. I can graph 2 thirds on a number line. And the definition of a rational number is an integer divided by an integer. It is the quotient of integers. And they can be anywhere on the number line. Even 1 is considered a rational number, because any number divided by itself is 1, and 1 is on the number line. 
What about 7 thirds? Here we have that improper fraction. If we want to put that on there, well, let's do a little bit of division. 3 goes into 7 twice with a remainder of 1. And if you recall, when we did the division quotient, we talked about remainders and the whole number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph 2 with a remainder of 1 third. Another way to write this is 2 and 1 third. And we'll talk about this in a later video. But by doing this, I can now graph it. And I say, OK, well, I have 1, I have 2, and 1 third. Well, once I get to this 2, I have to divide the next section into those three equal parts, just like I did here. And I have 2 and 1 third, or 7 thirds. Well, if I divided the whole thing into thirds, I'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It brings me right to there. 2 and 1 third, or 7 thirds. As we've seen here, 7 thirds is 2 and 1 third. So we're able to graph them. OK, what about equivalent fractions? Well, let's look at this box here. It says I'm going to divide it by 4. So I'm going to divide it by 4. And I'm going to shade in two of those four regions, two out of the four. And if we look at this, if I ask the question, how much of this box is shaded? Well, a lot of you can just look at it and say, well, that's half the box. That's because 2 fourths equals 1 half. One thing that we should always do is reduce our fractions. It makes the math a little easier. 2 fourths is 1 half because of a fundamental property of fractions. If I have a divided by b, if I multiply a and b by the same number, a times c and b times c, it will be equivalent. Conversely, if I divide a by c or divide b by c, I'm not changing the value. Well, let's just for a moment cover up that a and b. c divided by c. As we had just discussed, any number divided by itself is 1. I'm multiplying a over b by 1. Now, it's a special kind of 1, a fancy 1. It's c divided by c. So the, whole, the same thing holds true for division. If I look at this, I'm dividing by 1. As we just saw over there, if I divide by 1, I don't change its value. So let's see if we understand the concept. If we can take a fraction and reduce it, in this case, if I divide this by 2 and divide this by 2, I have 2 over 2 which is 1, so I'm not changing its value. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 1 half and 2 fourths are equivalent fractions. Let's say we have this here. We want to make these equivalent fractions. Well, <clears throat> if I multiply this by a number to get 25, what I do to the bottom of a fraction, I have to do to the top. So I essentially multiply by a fancy way of 1. So what would I have to multiply 5 by to get 25? Well, I'd have to multiply it by 5. What I do to the bottom, if I do it to the top, just like I did here, it doesn't change its value. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 5 is 25. So in a way, I can think of it as I unsimplified this fraction. I unreduced it. I made it larger instead of reducing it to 3 fifths. 3 fifths is the same thing as 15 20 fifths. What if we have a whole number? Well, a whole number, I can always think of over 1 because dividing by 1 doesn't change it. So 6 divided by 1 is still 6. But if I write it in this form, I can change its denominator. What would I multiply 1 by to get 2? Well, <clears throat> 1 times 2 is 2. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I'm multiplying by 1. You can see they're the same. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 halves is the same as 6. And if we think about it, 12 goes, or 2 goes into 12 six times. One last example. What if it has a variable? Well, we do the exact same thing. The variable we still have. So 3 and 21, what would I have to do? And I'll write it over here to 3 to make it 21. 
Well, I'd have to multiply it by 7. What would I have to do to 5? Well, if I did this operation to the bottom, I have to do that operation to the top because I want to multiply by 1. I don't want to change its value. 7 times 5 is 35. And 7 times 3 is 21 times b, 21b. So this example here, I want you to take this example and try it for yourself. See how you do. You want to figure out, what do I have to multiply by 4 to get 12 and to have a b? What you do to the bottom, you do to the top, and you should be set. Thank you.